India's decision to ban the BBC documentary on Narendra Modi and the Gujarat riot pits those who complain about censorship versus those who say that the release of the documentary is destabilizing and a conspiracy against India. Just today, the Union Law Minister Kiran Rijuju said, for some people, the white rulers are still the masters whose decision on India is final and not the decision of the Supreme Court of India. The big question, can a documentary truly destabilize the world's largest democracy? Joining us now, the senior BJP leader, Shopun Dasgupta. Thanks, Mr. Dasgupta, very much for being with us. Now, there have been several reactions, uh, obviously, which have been coming in. I'm going to read out a couple of those and get you to perhaps respond to them. Moa Moitra has tweeted, she says, good, bad or ugly, the government doesn't tell us what to watch, ban censorship. Hashtag ban censorship. She says there should be none. How would you respond to that? I don't want to respond. I mean, I think we, sh we should look look at this particular film uh, rather than make a blanket statement about censorship. Yes, I agree. Censorship is bad. Uh, what what really took place as far as this BBC documentary is concerned was that, that it was a premeditated hatchet job. It wasn't really a piece of journalism. But I mean, that OK, that that's, can be dismissed as editorial freedom to do what they want to. But I think far more important was, was this, that there was a certain disdain, a condescension towards the various judgments of the courts, particularly the Supreme Court. And I think the very casual and dismissive attitude which these people had, as if suggesting that the courts were somehow politically biased, and in favor of the ruling the dispensation. Mm -hmm. And I think that, to my mind, was a, uh, a conclusion, a step too far. And it was really that which the government was objecting to. Right. And I think a lot of people, including me, who participated in this, not knowing that this was going to be their ultimate objective. I mean, that became quite clear in, in the nature of the questions were posed, uh, the quick questions which were posed. But I think really that's the main objection to that, whether that should result in censorship or that should result in strictures. But I think more than anything else, this was a way of making the government's displeasure felt because this was really sure. not an official document. This is, this is not an official and, and we'll talk sort of about government that. to government thing. We'll talk about the government reaction. But again, another reaction, Tavleen Singh has tweeted, she says, Look, Is I India... don't want to get into people, individual people's tweets, you know. I, I think, think it's the idea it... behind the tweet which reflects a lot of voices. So I'll take out a name. No, no, because this that is... might reflect your voice, Vishnu. Fair enough. I think let's get so, into so then, the No, no, so that's fine. Question. Fair enough. I think the point, and this is in fact the question which I'm asking on my program as well, is if India can be destabilized by a BBC documentary, uh, are we truly on our way you know, to, to becoming a superpower, something who we aspire for. Who has said India is being destabilized? No, so that's the I question. I think India was undermined are we, are we, rather than are, destabilized. If we are not being destabilized, right, fair enough. So if that's, that's your answer. I think the question is certain institutions of India, very important institutions were undermined. That was it. It's not India has been destabilized. I don't think anybody really seriously believed that India was destabilized. People are putting words into people's mouths by saying India is destabilized. That, that's never the case. No, but the grounds for the banning of the of the, of, was, of you the documentary. Undermined and what should you do about it? Shopunda, the, the question, grounds for banning the documentary were one of the grounds was that it would have a destabilizing impact on on us, uh, on on our uh, country. That that may well be be the official version of it, but the point is very simply this: that here was a documentary made by a non-official body. Let's be clear about it. This was a film made for the BBC by an independent producer. Yes. Yeah, the BBC just bought it and uh, sort of uh, gave it its own uh, platform. The, what are we supposed to do about it? What are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to uh, just uh, ignore it? Or... Or should there be a certain step which should be taken, which expresses our displeasure about it? No, that was the question. And I think that the displeasure was expressed through the thing that, okay, this is, uh, this is banned now. I mean, it's, it's a banned, a, a, an item which is banned, which is not really in circulation in India. 
No, but Chopinda, how would you therefore respond to those who say that why make a big deal out of it? Is there anything tremendously new in this film? Well, what is new about it is the packaging which has been done after there has been a final closure of the event. Right. That's really what's and, new. And you believe that the response no, not, not is not in terms of the allegation. What, what, what had happened is there was a certain closure to this very unfortunate uh, series of incidents which happened in 2002. And uh, you resurrected it and you tried to put a gloss over it with a certain idea that they, they, this would have, uh, they, this would create certain political ripples in India. Now, whether that's going to happen or not is not to my mind. I, I don't think it will really happen. But I think it was necessary to also to express from the government's point of view a certain measure of very, very strong displeasure, not only, uh, I mean, in particular directed at the BBC, which again, in this, this case, was not an official body. It's a private body. What you wanted to do was you wanted to express that displeasure. Maybe there could have been other ways of expressing that displeasure. I, I don't know. Uh, no, but I'm but asking your opinion. Uh, you know, my opinion. My opinion was that it was necessary, for, from an official point of view, to express a very, very strong displeasure about the manner in which they'd gone about this. So, do you and, accept the argument made by some that? You know, this is an example of the BBC's colonial mentality and that there was a, a conspiracy. This is part of a con conspiracy to defame us at various levels. Well, I, whether it's a colonial mindset or not, is something which I, I leave, leave for the moment. What, what I think No, no, is, but why leave that, Chopunda? The reason is that's what everybody is, is, is it's saying. It's not something I would use. It's okay. not, not a term I would use. Okay. What I would use is the word is condescension. Right, because okay. now that condescension might have a, a history which incorporates colonialism, but I wouldn't necessarily use identify and hone in on the word colonial per, per se. Uh, that that's a very slightly different way of look, looking at the whole thing. Okay, so but, condescension, not necessarily colonial mentality. No, no, col co condescension in this case incorporates. Some condescension of the in, incorporates elements of colonial mentality. Is what absolutely, you're saying? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, second part of that question, is there a conspiracy? Well, what I think was very important to point out is that more than a conspiracy, there is a certain ecosystem which is working in the West. And that ecosystem has systematically and consistently tried to undermine everything which the Modi government has done from 2014. In a way, looking at the Modi government as somewhat illegitimate. And okay. this belongs to that school of uh, thinking and there, therefore if this is a conspiracy so be it and I think but it's part of that ecosystem. You see the way I look upon it, I'm, I'm using very different words to express thoughts and sentiments which are not terribly different from that of the government but I'm using words which are completely different, which are not the same. I won't use words like that because I, I, I mean I, I, I feel that you know conspiracy actually uh, it involves sort of 12 people sitting in a room and plotting something out. It's part of a mindset. It's part of an ecosystem and this has been happening systematically and you can and you can give various examples to show how they, this has been happening and so they, this was just part of one of those. So you questioned the BBC's um Editor, editorial watchdogs, right? Those who let this pass uh, for not being for, for for being dishonest at so many levels. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm it, saying was this an editorial was this an editorial failure, or do you believe well, that this was again the larger issue which you raised that you know it's part of an ecosystem? Yeah. Well, you see, there are certain figures in international politics who have been targeted by. BBC by certain other so-called liberal institutions of the West as, as as people who can never do anything right. Okay. You know, Viktor Orban in Hungary is a, a casualty of that. There have been, to, to some extent, on occasions, 
President Trump was a victim of that. But Narendra Modi, systematically, you know, there, there is a certain sneer, there is a certain disdain which accompanies any uh, assessment of Narendra Modi and a belief that this is somewhat, uh, that there is a certain measure of illegitimacy which accompanies the Modi government. And that illegitimacy cannot be removed by electoral mandates. And that's really the belief that we know best what is good for India rather than what the Indians think. At the same time, uh, Shapunda, there are those who point out that the BBC has, uh, in, in as much as I, I, I understand and I take the point you're making, there are those who point out that, look, the BBC has been self-critical about themselves, for example, in the case of the Bengal famine as well. So it's not just that they're hitting out at India in a particular context. They've hit out at the role of, of, of the empire, of the United Kingdom during colonial times, during the Bengal famine. And therefore, it's not correct to say that they are biased. They have targeted themselves when required. Well, you see, this belongs to a certain new fashion, which is there, this whole entire thing about being squeamish about colonialism, etc. So that's part of the new game. But let me tell you this, that while they might be critical about their own record, their own history, they are also at the same time convinced that they hold, the uh, they are the repository of ultimate wisdom as to what is good for any country or not. And that includes themselves, which is why the BBC often gets into trouble with its own government for having a certain particular bias about it, which goes against their charter. And that, I mean, so what we are seeing in India is part of a larger issue which they have about people they don't like. And why do they not like them? Because they go against what they believe is should be the way in which the country or the world should be run. Mm. Shapunda, despite what Rishi Sunak said in Parliament, do you believe that this episode, considering the reactions which we have in our country, could have some sort of an impact on the relationship with the UK? Yeah, in the short term, certainly. It will have a, it will have a short term thing. But I believe that ultimately we are both mature countries and I think we, may, we should be able to d distinguish between institutions of government institutions of the state and other institutions which while having some relationship with the state do not necessarily always reflect what it, what uh, is, is uh, Britain. Now I think what's important is that I believe that ultimately Britain and India will do what is in their self-interest and will do what is also there is a mutual convergence of views and in this case the mutual convergence of views would say that what the BBC has done is irregular and not on. But that's an important point you make. I mean, you're drawing a distinction between the BBC and, and the British government, and, and that's the way they project themselves as being entirely independent. Uh, I ask you this because many have said that, no, they are in fact uh, just an extension of the British government, considering, for example, the access that they enjoy, the documents well, that they're able to get. So therefore... No, they, uh, you see, there is the BBC World Service, which gets a certain funding from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. So had this been done by the World Service, I would have certainly said, yes, there, there's a direct connection between the British government. But, but as far as the corporation is concerned, the main body of the corporation, and they, this was shown on BBC too. Mm -hmm. So there is a de degree of autonomy which they had. Now you, you can say that that autonomy is notional and uh, it really doesn't exist in critical areas, but it's there. I mean, there, there is a one step removed uh, relationship which they have with the British government. And for the moment, let's accept that yeah. we are not we are not necessarily going to have a diplomatic uh, power with the United Kingdom. We can have a certain exchange. But what is that short term impact you're talking about, Shapunda? Well, the short term impact is that it vitiates the atmosphere. You know, we are in, we are in a we are in the G20. Uh, thing where Britain is an important part. We, we've got a very important trade relation uh, uh, negotiations which are going on. Some of them which are going to be, you know, hard bargaining is going to take place on that. And anything which vitiates the atmosphere and brings an extraneous element, you know, brings in the whole things about history, colonialism, etc. And that doesn't really help in these... Uh, but again, G20, Shapunda, you know, you mentioned that. 
could this not have some sort of impact on, on how India is seen around the world, developing nations as far as G20 is concerned, that here is India, they've slammed the BBC, they've blocked the Twitter, Twitter, uh, YouTube, etc., etc., on this film, and yet we project ourselves, and correctly so, as the largest democracy in the world, uh, you know, in our mindset, the best democracy in the world. So, well, we are a democracy, and I think there, there, there's no doubt about it, the quality of our de de democracy. But of course, every democracy doesn't set their own rules. Now, yes, I would say that if you ask me personally, then uh, I, I think, you know, we, we should sometimes be, uh, we, we should disregard irritating voices which come about uh, from various quarters. But, uh, but as I said, there was an important point which had to be made, which is that certain Indian institutions should not be so recklessly undermined and without with impunity, which is what happened. And therefore, I mean, you, you can't really take legal action against them. So th right. this is probably the second best thing you can do about them. Final question. Um, lots of students, um, you know, here in JNU wanted to see it. They were told that they can't. Uh, in Hyderabad, I believe there has been a screening at Hyderabad University for some students. Um, you can't really stop this sort of thing. I mean, young of minds are you curious. Young, young minds are curious. Well, okay, I mean, besides you, because it's very difficult in today's day and age, you know, from technology, you know, being what it is, and people have a, a, innovative ways of uh, getting this. Uh, you know, that's a bit of bravado. Come on. You know, these sort of students would sort of do it. We all tend to, I, I don't know, remember in our uh, sort of youth, we all used to low look at, furtively look at Lady Chatterley's lover. So, you know, this can be a bit of that. So anything which is banned always has, has a certain macabre sort of attraction to people. So, I mean, that's inevitable I and mean, inescapable. Final, I don't think we can get to work about it. Sure. Final question. And you know, we sort of spoke about this earlier. Do you disagree with the ban? I, I understand your ideas. Everything that you're saying, that the film is disagreeable, you know, there are those in the UK who've done it wrongly, they have a certain agenda, um, and you know, you've used very precise words. But do you disagree with, with the ban, as it were, on Twitter, YouTube, etc.? Well, the ban is something the government had to do because they had to do, they had to take some measure which... Uh, so this measure, do you disagree with the measure, is what I'm look, asking? Look, they have to take some step to register their very, very strong disapproval. Now, can you tell me anything apart from the ban which was in, available to, to them? There was nothing else available to them. So I think because there was nothing else available to them, the ban has been put there. But right. I think you mustn't look, look at the ban as meaning that, you know, suddenly there has been a sort of massive crackdown on freedom of thought, freedom of expression, and all critical voices have been snuffed out, particularly those which are emanating from uh, overseas. No, I don't think that's really the case. I think we must see this as a sort of a, a, a very, very specific case, a very unfortunate case. And I, th I hope the sooner we can get rid of the controversy, the better it is for everybody. All right, Chobun Das Gupta, wonderful speaking to you. Thank you so much for speaking on, uh, on this huge controversy in this country. Hopefully it will end. I agree with you there. Thanks yeah. very much indeed. Thank you very much.